after posting that video about the odds of winning Powerball, I actually got some feedback, not only on the YouTube channel, but on Facebook, that people wanted to know, well, how did I know that 69 choose 5 was uh, 11,238,513? And they wanted to see what was going on. And I'm, I'm so glad people asked this question, because I'd love to make a video about it. So, when we have something like 69 choose 5, you might remember the formula for combinations, and it's n choose r, and basically it's n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So n is the number of objects you're choosing from. So in this case, we're choose there's 69 numbers we could possibly pick, and we're picking five. We're choosing five, okay? So if we kind of filled this out, it would just be for this one. It will be 69 factorial over 5 factorial times 69 minus 5 factorial, okay? So if we simplify that, it will be over 64 factorial. So now what we know is we can, 69 factorial, we can rewrite as 69 times 68 times 67 times 66 times 65 times. And then instead of going all the way down, okay, we're, we can write it, whoops, we can write it as 64 factorial, okay? So then divided by 5 factorial times 64 factorial. So check you later, 64 factorials. We are left with 64 factorials. Okay, now remember, 5 factorial is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, I mean, we technically don't have to do the 1, but you know, okay? So then we end up simplifying this, and when we actually do the math in our calculator, we get 11,238,513. Okay, boom. So that's what 69 choose 5 is. Now, we of course could memorize this formula and use it and blah, 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 but do we really know what it means? I mean, if we're just plugging numbers in and getting an answer, that doesn't necessarily show a true understanding of this probability problem, okay? So I wanted you to see it done out just because some people might be like, oh yeah, yeah, the formula. But now let's talk about what it really means, okay? So I'm going to erase this. And let's talk about it in a different way. So, think about it. You have 69 numbers to choose from, and you're choosing five. So if we think about it as slots, okay, and there's no replacement, okay? So we pick the first number, okay? There are 69 ways to pick that first number. Well, once we've removed that number, there's only 68 ways to pick the next number. And once we remove that number, there's only 67 ways to pick the third number, and then 66, and then 65. Okay, so 69 times 68 times 67 times 66 times 65. Okay, well, wait a second though. If you look back, you remember that it was all over 5 factorial. So why is that happening? I get this part. I get this part. But why is that happening? So this is, you might recognize this as the multiplication uh, principle of counting. It's like when you're, you know, picking a certain number of, of things in order matters. It's like, well, 69 ways to choose the first, 68, 67, 66, etc. Okay? Well, that's the big thing. That order doesn't matter. So think about it. I picked one, two, three, four, five. 
Well, technically, you know, when the balls are spinning in the drum and one comes out, five could come out for, first. Right? Five and then two and then three and then four and then one. That's the same as if one came out first and then two and then three and then four and then five. So basically we're accounting for the fact that there are multiple ways, there are five factorial ways that we can pick these five numbers, okay? So let me show you an example with kind of smaller numbers because I think if you see that, it'll make a little more sense. So I'm just gonna erase this here. And I'm gonna erase this. Okay, just so we have more room. Now, let's start off with maybe We're only choosing two numbers out of 69, okay? So let's think about this. 69 ways to choose the first number, 68 ways to choose the second number. So let's just make it easy and say it's one is the first, two is the second. Well, remember, the numbers could come out two first and then one second, and it doesn't matter. We still win, okay, because everything goes in ascending order. So we have to say, all right, well, 69 times 68 divided by two because we have to account for the fact that there are two ways that each pair of numbers could come out. Now, let me show you another way we can think about it where we increase it, and this way might allow you to see it better. 69 choose three. Okay, so again, 69 times 68, oops, <laughs> times 68 times 67, okay? But then remember, let's say the numbers were one, two, three, just to make it easy. One, two, three. Well, I could also get one, three, two, and I could also get two, one, three, and two, three, one, and three, one, two, and three, two, one. All of those possible scenarios could happen in terms of the order that they come out, but they all mean the same thing. It's still one, two, three, because in Powerball, it always goes in ascending order. So it, whether they come out two, three, one, or one, two, three, it's the same thing. You pick one, two, three, okay? So how many of these are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six. So we have to take this whole thing and we need to divide it by six, okay? There are six ways we can get one, two, three. So we need to divide by six. Okay, so this is what I want you to understand. Six is also known as three factorial. Two is also known as two factorial. So that's where we're getting this division. So when we do 69 times 68 times 67 times 66 and we divide by five factorial, we're getting it because there are five factorial ways we can order the five numbers that we chose. Okay, does that make sense? And then there are three factorial ways we can order these and two factorial ways we can order that. And, and, and a visual that might make you understand it better is like a quick little tree diagram. So if I say, for example, let's use one, two, three, because I think it'll be easier to buy. So we start here, we could get one first, we could get two first, we could get three first. And then once we get one, we could get two, or we could get three. And if we get two first, we could get one next, three next. And we could get, here we could get one or two. Okay, so as you can see that when we start, okay, if we're only picking three numbers, when we start for every set that we get, for every three numbers, so this is when we can only get one, two, and three, there are three ways that the first number can happen. And then once we have that, there are two ways the second number can happen. So it's three times two, and then obviously the last number, there's only one way. I don't really show that all the time. But that's where you're seeing that factorial. That's why it's happening, because there are three ways to pick the first one, then two ways to pick the next one. So once we pick one of these numbers, there are three ways we can pick the first one. Once we pick that, there are two ways we can pick the second, and then one way we can pick the third. And that's where that factorial comes in, that three times two times one, or in this case, two times one. Okay, so I want to make sure you understand this, that we don't just kind of take it 
at face value, here's the formula, let's do it, but that we really understand what's going on. So that's why we're dividing by this five factorial. So it's not just 69 times 68 times 67 times 66 times 65, but we have to remember that there are five factorial ways to order any five numbers that come out and that it doesn't matter. If it comes out one, two, three, four, five is the same as, it, as if it comes out two, one, three, four, five. Okay? So there you go. I hope this helps.